Boom, 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 boom. Bang, 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 bang. Yes, God, honey. We are back. We back. We back. After the winter break, we are back in this thing like we never left. We doing Empire, the remainder of season two, episode 11. Let's do what we do with this shit, y'all. Let's do what we do. We're going to start right back off where we left off uh, before the winter break, child. Rhonda laying at the bottom of them damn stairwells, child. She down there. She is down there. She bleeding like a hog. And she she asking God to save her child. It don't matter if he save her or not. Just save her child. Now, we know Rhonda don't really believe in God because she be looking at Andre like, nigga, is you all right? But see... I ain't going to do this the whole rest of this season, but I had to touch this one because when I'm told to do something, I, I told you I'm an obedient type bitch. But now, that was just, that, that right there was a real piece of how people and how life really goes. You got a lot of people out here saying they don't believe in the higher power. They don't believe in God. But the minute you're in the midst of a crisis, who you call on? <laughs> All right. Well, she done managed to scoot her cell phone over to her phone, but child is cracked up beyond uh, beyond use. Child, you're not going to be able to use that. But what she can do, she uh, she can trip the alarm, and that's what she does. She takes the uh, phone, throw it at the glass door by the front door, and that triggers the alarm to go off. That's how she's going to get us some help. We also see that she's drifting in and out of consciousness, and it looks like she's seen a figure, but she's probably going to believe uh, that she ain't seen nothing. It was all a figment of her imagination or she's not going to be able to remember nothing as it is, okay? We, meanwhile, back at Empire, you got Hakeem um, done portrayed the family by uh, out, by voting Lucius out of uh, his CEO position. And Lucius ain't having it, honey. Lucius done went up in his office. He done locked the door. He in there with a pimp named Slipback, baby. And he saying, he, you know, he built this company. He ain't going nowhere. Well, Slickback telling him they're going to find a way to fix it. It probably was some type of illegal tactic used during the turnover. He told Andre, he said, uh, I need you to get on that there. So that's what Andre got on to do. He got to go handle that. But the police are now at the door, banging on the door, because Luce is locked up in there, and he trespassing at this point, okay? Slickback had sense enough to say, hold up, let's put these guns away, because the last thing we want is for them to come up in here, and, you know, we have a... You know, we get our lives took for little or nothing because, you know, black lives do matter, okay? So he put the guns away just as they bust through the door and they telling him he got to leave. Now, here come uh, Camilla DeVille is what I call her. And she's saying she, uh, he got to go. He told her, bitch, I built this company. If you want me out, you're going to have to have me removed out of him. Baby, Lucy's wasn't about to go nowhere. Until Becky came in and told him Lucius is Rhonda. She at the hospital and they say she could die. That's what made him him and Sleek back leave. Otherwise, he wasn't going nowhere. She would have had to do what they had to do. You know, Lucius will he'll get out bad behind that empire. I ain't mad at him shit. You supposed to fight to the death for you. It's yours. Now, cooking made me so proud in this moment. Yes, she did. Cookie sitting over in the dark at Hakeem house waiting on him to roll up in there. Now, she not just sitting in there. She's sitting in there in the dark. You could tell she had been crying. And uh, Cookie got a broom. <laughs> How can you came up in there? She said, how could you do this to your family? He said, I wasn't doing it to the family. I was doing it to him. She said, he said, I didn't even realize I had voted against him until I had already said. She said, oh, okay, good, good. Since you ain't mean to do that, you didn't miss to. We're going to have another voting, and uh, you're going to vote your father back in like you're supposed to. You go away, I'm doing something. Okay. Um, so, he tell her he ain't going to do it. She said, Hakeem, we're going to call another board uh, meeting, 
and you are going to put your father back in the CEO seat. I said, no, I'm not. Cookie gave us season one. And I was so here for her. She went to cooking that motherfucker with that broom. I said, bitch, you betting me? Because when, when the broom broke, she started using her purse. I probably would have kept on using out of Heist it up to where I could hit him good with it in, and continue to bust him across his damn head. Oh, I was like, child, mm, mm, mm. She, I wouldn't have never stopped beating his ass. Mm, mm, mm. <clears throat> you done did your daddy wrong. Then you done told your mama you ain't going to take that back, and she done went upside your head. Beat that bitch. Slap that hoe. Get that trick. Yes, cook it. Beat that motherfucker like he... Shit, like he stole so. Now down at the hospital, you got Jamal Cook and Lucius, and they all crying because Vanilla Love Drop lost the baby. She didn't die, she lost her baby. And uh, here comes Hakeem. Now you little Benedict Arnold, you. What make you think you gonna hang out with us and I missed our pain? You didn't just, you, you took the family legacy away, so I'm not here for you. She told him, uh-uh, no sir, you are not with us. You would think that he was gonna leave. But he didn't. He went over away from them, but he there too. As Andre come in, because remember Andre had been sent off to go find a legal loophole that could possibly put Lucian back in the CEO position down there at the Empire. Well, he come in and they got to break the news that the baby didn't make it, but Rhonda is alive. He want to see Rhonda. They know that the doctor's still with Rhonda, and right now Andre is probably not in an emotional state to really be wanting to go see her. So he's telling them that he want to go see her anyway. It takes Lucius and Jamal to hold him down because he goes into a sort of psychotic situation, but it wasn't that bad like we thought he was going to be needing it. It was sad, though, and... um. Child, that was that was a real scene right there. That kind of made me feel bad for him. Now later on, we see uh, he does talk with his wife, and uh, she upset, of course. Like, and you normally would be upset, you know. I suffered a miscarriage, so you be upset, child. And uh, she told him that she prayed and asked God to save the kid. And Andre tried to tell her, look, he he didn't save the baby, but he saved you, and we can do this again. She told him God don't exist, otherwise her child would have survived, and she just broke down crying in that moment. Later on, the bitch that caused the destruction, Miss Anika, Miss, uh, child, child, that, that, that died for everybody, for real, that, that whole there, she done slept with daddy, son, mm. Ugh. Anyway, she gonna come in there to visit Vanilla Love Drop. She really trying to see if the girl remembered anything because she knew she was not fully unconscious when she made her grand escape out that house after pushing that woman down that stairwell. Well, Rhonda don't remember nothing right now because she know she know she was pushed, but you're right now she don't remember nothing and she upset telling Rhonda that she feel like she done disappointed Andre and Lucius there will be no heir to the throne that raggedy bitch gonna say oh there will be a, a heir to the throne now Rhonda taking it as you trying to encourage me telling me that I'll have you know I can reproduce again my husband and I and, and give Lucius the grandson he wanted no that bitch is saying that cause she allegedly is pregnant by what she says she pregnant she had them damn birth I mean uh Pregnancy test uh, at the other part of the season. So I guess she's supposed to be pregnant by High King, but that's what she talking about. But Rhonda taking it as something else. Child, before I forget this, let me go and throw this in so I can be through with this here. Later on, when Rhonda get out that hospital and she at that house, uh, Andre take her home and stuff, she sent him to go get her some Bach and water because that's what she needs. She says she don't want to sleep upstairs. Uh, today, tomorrow, or no time soon. He say he understand. He go off to get her a drink. Now, for reasons unknown, she decides she gonna try to hobble her ass up the stairwell, and she already got a broke leg, okay? So, she gonna try to hobble up the stairwell, get five steps up, fall her ass down, and that triggered a flashback of her falling. Now, I'm looking for more of these flashbacks to occur as the season continues on, because that's when she gonna remember that Anika was in her house. Must been a bitch that pushed her down, and she didn't fall down. But I just want to tell y'all about that because I sort of forget that as I get into this other stuff. Now, the next thing we seen was Jamal performing for the Ace of People. Now, him and his daddy is up for this same award, okay? But he lets everybody know, you know, despite the fact that it's the first time a father and son ever been up against this, uh, up against each other for this award, his alliance is with his father and he stand by his father. Uh, throughout this crisis that's been going on with their company. And he performs this song, right? 
Well, afterwards, he's sitting down having a drink with Jemison. Remember, Jemison is the gay guy who wants to support uh, and push um, Jamal's career so that, oh, I'm having a hot flash, y'all. Oh, oh. Uh, so that he could win the Ace Award, and without his support, he pretty much ain't gonna get it, okay? But, um, child, what I'm trying to tell y'all, word on Jimson not feeling too good about uh Jamal right now because see, word on the curb is that uh he he had banged Alicia No Keys, and uh he worried about how that's gonna affect the gay movement, it's gonna make it seem like gay is more of an option, people choosing this stuff, and he don't like that. Well, Jamal saying that. How would people know about that anyway and that he should have a right to do whatever he wants? He's still gay, regardless if he had a moment with a woman or not. He still considered himself a gay man, so gay is not an option. Well, Jimison ain't pleased with that. He get up and tell Jamal good luck with his music, and he leaves. And I took it as to mean that he possibly was pulling his support away from Jamal because Jamal had done that shit there, okay? Now, later, we see Jamal go speak with Cookie. And she basically tell him that you need Jameson. If you wants to get this here Ace Award, you're going to need his support. And she asked him what was up with that uh, sleeping around with uh, Miss, uh, no, Mr. No Keys. What, what was going on with that, honey? Why you do that? And he said he gay. He just had a moment with Sky. That was it. He just had a moment. That's her name on the show, Sky. But uh, he asked Cookie, you ain't never experimented with a woman? And she said, my boy, look, I'm not about to sit here and have this conversation with you. What you need to do is you need to put your gay hat back on if you want to have a chance of winning this award because he's right he's going to help you only if you are promoting the gay movement and that's all point blank in the fucking period okay now let's go back over to high king and uh he's sitting up in there talking to miss deville and she's saying that the board members uh want to have this other guy I forgot his damn name uh appointed ceo of the board and of empire but uh He uh she think that she can help him be the become the CEO, she say, but if you want the CEO position, you're gonna have to get rid of Latino set Spanish butterfly girl. That's what you're gonna have to get her. You're gonna have to get rid of her. Uh he telling her he think he might be in love with that girl. She's like, Oh, you know, she ain't trying to hit it. That bitch jealous for one thing, cause I don't know if she want the girl or she wants you, but she don't she don't want you with her. And um she telling him that, you know, if he wants this position, then he's going to prove that he wants that. And one of the things he got to do is get rid of that girl. Now, I don't know how she had that type of stance. Because remember, she married the Mimi girl. <laughs> Child, anyway. If he wants the position, he got to do he got to do what the fuck she want him to do. And that's point blank in the period. That's all that is to it. Now, Cookie came in telling um, DeVille Hakeem's still under contract with uh, Lion Dynasty. And... Uh, he belongs to Lion Dynasty. DeVille asked her, well, how much does it take to release him from his contract? And Cookie said, two million. She said, uh, no, I'll just tie it up in litigation and crush you because we all know Lion Dynasty don't have the available capital to sustain a legal battle with Empire. We already know that, okay? Cookie asked uh, Hakeem, so you going to choose this bitch over your family? He said, at least she don't hit me with her purse. And that stupid ass, the real bitch say, um, I will if you ask me to. Now, I'm thinking at that moment, Cookie going to haul off and slap this bitch. I'm, I'm looking for Cookie to just nut the fuck up in this situation. But she didn't. She just took her hand and got her a handful of either marbles, gumballs, or something like that. And then she's walking out. She's throwing that shit down on the damn floor. Camilla going to say, childish, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, bitch, you the one sitting up fucking her 20-year-old son who's still wet behind the ears, breath smelling like Similac and Infamil, big shoe wearing ass little boy. I know you did not sit your half a hundred ass up here and say that woman childish. Girl, it's childish that you falling in love with 20-year-old dick. You out your damn mind, child. You ain't seen 20 and you don't know how many years. Get real. You look good, bitch. You look good, but let's just be real. You's an old ass hoe, okay? 
Now, Hakeem get drunk and he go into Latino Butterfly rehearsal calling her lazy and saying her vocals is weak, right? With well, them two backup girls, you know, one of them jealous of her anyhow. And she talking about she feel like her vocals would be better. She see how Hakeem coming. So they both decide, both the backup girls decide to leave. Hakeem to call uh, Latino Butterfly some goddamn... um bitch or something like that and she said you think you must think you must be crazy you think i'm gonna lie you see him talk to me like that oh i'm finna leave he told her well gone bitch carry your ass on i knew it was only a matter of time before you took your virginal ass back anyway how you he done said retires with the uh her because the veal told him he had to okay now, Cookie goes over to Lucia's house, and it's all dark, and then we know Lucia's got to be upset because it's always bright up in the uh, Lions Mansion, child. Be lights on every goddamn well, but it's dark as fuck, and he tucked under them covers like he was put down by his nanny for the night. And um, basically, she just, she know what he's feeling, the loss of his company, so she kind of held him and woke up the next morning in the same fucking clothes and coat that she had on she noticed she still got that shit on so you know lucius is in a slump because he ain't tried to get him some cookie overnight she find him in his closet he is sitting up in there loading magazines into his guns he tell her how did our son get to be so evil she hit him with some real the apple don't fall far from the tree lucia he say well i'm gonna tell you like this here i want my company back and i'm going forward and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get it. I'm going to take his ass out. Okay. She's like, no, nah, you're not going to take my son. Now, you ain't going to be telling me that. Look, Lucius, I got a plan. I need to get inside Empire and I can take Camilla down. All I need you to do is give me twenty, give me 48 hours to get in. She, he told her, all right, then. I'm going to go on and give you that. You got 48 hours? <laughs> but he ain't never stopped loading that magazines and that damn gun, though. <laughs> I bet you that. Well, child, next we see Spanish, uh, Spanish butterfly. No, we didn't. What happened now? Oh, Lucius had a meeting, y'all, with some little released, recently released convicts, and they going to shake down some of the board members, child. I don't know if he, you know, so they do better voting skills in the future and don't try to become CEO of his company, because Lucius still know what's going on, right? Child, we see one of the motherfucking members car blow up. The other one come home to find a cat hanging upside down. The one that they were saying, uh, Camilla was saying the boy wanted him to be the new CEO. Child, how about he got his ass whooped by two or three different dudes, okay? So when it came time to sit before the judge, I mean, at the board table, nobody wants to uh, put their bid in to be CEO. And hell, the man that got beat up, the one they wanted to be CEO, said, Chunk Deuces, fuck this shit. I'm not dealing with none of this here. So nobody wanted to put their bid in to be the CEO. CEO, a Jamal, I mean, Hakeem gonna jump his motherfucking young amateurish ass up there and try to give a Lucius Lyon type of motivational speech. They clapped out of fear, not because they was here for what he was saying. And child, he is not a CEO of the damn company. I said, okay, keep it up, junior rookie. Keep it up. Now, next thing we see is Spanish Butterfly. She down at the library or some shit singing a song. It was a pretty song. I ain't never heard the shit before, but it sounded good. And it must have been streaming live from somewhere because Hakeem seen her singing from his laptop. He get to feeling some kind of way and he go to her apartment and explain to her why he did what he did. He trying to get his company back, but he had to do that in order to get the company back. Now he got the company back. He want him and her to pick up where they left off and be cool. She must have been falling for the okie doke. I don't know what kind of spell uh, Hakeem got on these women, but baby, she was quick to say yes to that and even took him up to the stairwells to her room and offered him her never used before box. He gave her two opportunities to back out of this thing before he go in and pop that cherry. She told him, all I want to know is that we going to be together afterwards. He said, yes, we are. And she dropped it like it was hot for him, even big for the dick. And I said, oh, oh my. Mm. Well, let's go to Jamal performance. Instead of doing the song that what he was originally supposed to be doing, Jamal decides that he is going to sing the one he wrote on the way in. 
It's a song about freedom, how he should be able to do what the fuck he want to do, say what the fuck he want to say. And in this particular performance, he is seen grinding on a man and he was grinding on a woman. Jemison happens to be down in that audience and he is happy about it all. He liking that there. So I'm took by that. Jamal has earned his uh, support back because he was all right with the performance. Okay, child. Now. To me, now nah, I ain't gonna give y'all that. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do the last thing that I like the most. Now let's black track because I left some shit out, okay? Now, as Jamal, Andre, and Cookie was down there at the hospital, Rhonda was about to be released, and uh, Andre had shared with them that she is concerned that they may not be able to reproduce again, okay? Well, Cookie decided to share that she and Lucia suffered a miscarriage before she even had the boys, and it was a girl, and that they took it hard, but later on in life was blessed with three beautiful boys. And Jamal says, is that to include Hakeem, too? And, uh, yeah, that's what it was including him, too, because that's a mother's love. Even though they pissed at him, hell, she still love her boy, you know. And he t- she told him that he could share that with Rhonda. But I was thinking to myself that that would have probably been more impactful if it came from Cookie herself. I would have thought that his mama going to talk to her in her time of bereavement would probably help her or comfort her way more than him relaying a story that his mama told him. But, hell, I don't write for Lee Daniels and he don't even know me. So, okay. Um, now... Let me tell y'all how Cookie got into this empire before I tell y'all about this last scene that I just absolutely love. Now, by now, y'all done figured out this shit ain't in order, okay? This is the way I want to tell the story this time. So, just follow me and you will be blessed in the end, okay? Now, Cookie got in with empire because while they was in there having that conversation in the waiting room waiting on Rhonda, Cookie mentioned that she needed to get in uh, to... She she need to get in there with them. Jamal say he think he can help her. So they go to see Hakeem, of course, Carilla, uh, uh, Camilla DeVille is there. And um, uh, all of them go over there. They talking about that black and white album. Okay, Cookie suggests that Lion Dynasty release it. And, of course, Hakeem, being the new CEO of Empire, was totally against it. She said, well, you still on the contract with Lion Dynasty in still way. And Andre lets them know that there was never a, uh, there was never a document brought, uh, drawn up saying which company would release the album. So it's up in the air. Okay. Cookie telling her that, well, Cookie saying that let us release it. Here go Camilla, her favorite line, Empire, tie you up in litigations if you do. Jamal said, well, I'll just release it online. Oh, I learned a thing or two from my brother, Hakeem, sitting over there. So, uh, Cooker came up with the idea, well, Andre suggested that they, you know, that they come to uh, an agreement since they reached the impasse. Say, let's try to work this out. How about we do what Def Jam and Rockefeller do? Lion Dynasty releases it under the Empire, but we control what goes on with our artists. And Cookie actually becomes head of A&R for both companies. <laughs> of course, you know Camilla saying, don't do that shit. Do not do that. They're going to overpower you and take the company back. He said... He didn't care if they did. He said it was all about teaching Lucius a lesson because he had been doing too much. But the empire is a family business and he wants the family involved. So he agrees to that. So Cookie is coming back to empire. She in there, bitch. And she is in control of A&R for both companies. And she still retains control over her lion dynasty. I said, Cookie, bitch, you better, sh- you better shake that mountain lion foundation. Get her ass away. Banish that bitch. You better do it, Sir Robbie. And for those of you who know, watch The Lion King, you know what the fuck I'm saying when I say Sir Robbie better handle that shit, okay? Now, the last and most riveting scene of the night to me was when Lucius called Hakeem down to meet him underneath the railroad tracks in the exact spot that he had killed uh, Binky in. Lucius told uh, Hakeem, he said, I had a best friend. He said, that man introduced me to your mama. 
He helped me raise y'all. He put his life on the line for me many, many times, and I did the same thing for him. But when he came for the empire, I shot him in the face. Now, why he telling him all of that shit? He has had this gun in his hand. He take that gun and give it to him. He said, Hakeem, you want to come for the throne? You're going to have to take me down. He said, you better kill me. Because if you don't kill me tonight, you're going to force me to do what I have to do. Meaning the next time I see you, I'm coming at you with everything I got. Hakeem pussy popped like he was going to do it. Put the gun up to Lucia's head. Lucia's is encouraging him to do it. He still ain't did shit. He's still sitting there hesitating. Damn near doing a greatest shake on a bitch. But um, Lucia's seen the hesitation. He already know he got him in the balls. He already got them balls right there. But he turned around. He said, since you like stabbing people in the back, I'll turn my back around and let you shoot me in the back. He said, Hakeem, you better make it worth it. He said, because if you don't kill me tonight, just know when I see you again, I'm coming at you with everything I got. Hakeem stood back there with that gun behind Lucius' head for a few minutes. Then he wound up walking around in front of Lucius, throwing the gun down to the floor, talking about, I ain't got to do nothing you tell me to do. Lucius ain't bad. He ain't arguing. He ain't catch no attitude. He told him straight up, son, I'm a man that keeps my word. I promise you I keep my word. Ain't that some shit, y'all? Why the hell y'all here uh, 25 minutes? I'm sorry about that, child. But, you know, this is my show. I be all off up into it. Uh, we'll be back down here next week doing this same shit again. In the meantime, in between time, please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next video. And peace.